Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about the microprocessor security vulnerabilities known as Spectre and Meltdown, which were first publicly reported in January 2018. These affect the vast majority of microprocessors, hence the issue affects the vast majority of computers in use today, and is something we all need to know about. And what I'm going to do in this video is to give a quick explanation of what Spectrum Meltdown actually are and which processors are affected by the issue. But I'm going to focus most of my time here then on what we need to do about this, what mitigation measures we can possibly take. And I'm also going to talk about the broader implications for the computing industry. Both Spectre and Meltdown refer to design flaws in modern microprocessors that may allow one program to access the memory and hence data of another. They are identified by several researchers, including those at Google Project Zero, and are now documented on a website called meltdownattack.com. And as you can see, they now even have their own logos. Specifically, Meltdown breaks or melts the hardware isolation which is supposed to exist between user applications and the operating system. In a slightly different manner, Spectre breaks the hardware isolation that is supposed to exist between different applications. Technically, Spectre refers to two different vulnerabilities, both of which take advantage of a feature of modern processors called speculative execution. This is where a processor anticipates and performs likely future work in order to improve performance. However, the Spectre vulnerabilities trick programs into using speculative execution to leak information. In practice, what all of this means is that malware applications may be able to steal sensitive data. For example, you may enter your credit card details into a web page or your username and password into a web page, and then these may be accessed by a piece of JavaScript code hidden in a malicious online advert on another web page. Neither Spectre or Meltdown can corrupt or modify or delete data on a computer, but because they can potentially be used to access sensitive information, they are a big security risk. At the time of making this video, it's not known whether Spectre or Meltdown have been used in the real world for malicious purposes. However, it's only safe to assume that hackers will take advantage of these vulnerabilities in the future. The Spectre and Meltdown design flaws exist in hundreds of different microprocessor models and hence compromise the security of a great many desktop PCs, laptop PCs, tablets and smartphones. Specifically, the Meltdown vulnerability exists in every Intel microprocessor manufactured since 1995, with the exception of Itanium and Atom chips made before 2013. Meltdown also impacts some of the systems on a chip used in Apple tablets and Apple smartphones, and some ARM chips also used in mobile devices. Meltdown does not, however, impact any processors made by AMD. The two Spectre vulnerabilities impact processors made by all chip manufacturers. As you can see, there are more Intel models impacted than any other. However, given Intel's long-standing market share, this is hardly a surprise. The table you're looking at here is based on some excellent analysis from TechArp, who have published these web pages which list every impacted CPU or at least every impacted CPU made before about 2008. So if you like, you can visit this site and you can find out if your own processor is impacted, although to be honest, if it's sitting inside a desktop PC or a laptop, it almost certainly is. The above all noted, viewers of this channel may be interested to learn that the ARM Cortex-A53 processors used in the Raspberry Pi 3 are not impacted by Spectre or Meltdown, a fact recently confirmed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Indeed, all models of Raspberry Pi ever manufactured are unaffected by Spectrum Meltdown, so if you want to use a PC which won't have these issues, you can use a Raspberry Pi. So, aside from using a Raspberry Pi, what can we all do about Spectre and Meltdown? Well, the only absolutely secure solution would be to replace every microprocessor which has the issues with a new microprocessor which doesn't have the issues. But of course, that is not a realistic possibility. A, because it would involve replacing literally billions of microprocessors, billions of computers. And secondly, because 
Intel and AMD have not yet got on the market new chips which don't have the meltdown and Spectra vulnerabilities. So we don't have a replacement option at the moment and it's never really going to be a realistic broad solution. So the only things we can do is to try and take mitigation measures to reduce the risk and the first of these to, is to update your web browser. Now fortunately at the time of making this video all major web browsers have been updated so if you're running Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer or Edge or Safari on the Mac just make sure that it's set to receive automatic updates. The second line of defense is operating system patches. So again, the key thing is to make sure that automatic updates are activated as they are automatically in Windows 10 or to install manual updates on a very regular basis. And again, at the time of releasing this video, all current Microsoft, Apple, Google and Linux operating systems have been given operating system patches for Meltdown and Spectre. The third line of defense is to update the firmware or microcode that controls how the processor interfaces with the operating system and applications. And this is unfortunately where things start to get trickier, as these kinds of updates are specific to different computer hardware. So every computer user will need to obtain appropriate patches from the manufacturer of their particular computer or from their motherboard supplier. And this is not something that most users tend to be familiar with. There's also the problem that firmware updates are not yet available for less modern microprocessors, and indeed they may never become available for computers more than a few years old. At the time of making this video, Intel has released firmware patches for motherboards that support its 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th generation processors, which are also known as Haswell, Broadwell, Skylake, Cable Lake and Coffee Lake. However, the patches for the Haswell and Broadwell chips have already been reported to cause computers to spontaneously reboot, and so I would not advise installing such patches at this time. To give you some personal examples just to illustrate this issue, whilst there is now a patch available for the motherboard in the Skylake i7 PC I built in December 2016, it's not currently possible to install a firmware update for the Haswell i3 PC I built in January 2014 and which remains in regular use. There also isn't a patch for this. This is my Microsoft Surface 2 tablet. Microsoft have released patches for everything beyond the Surface 2 but not for the Surface 2 and Surface Pro before it. This is a 2014 device. This will probably never get patched for Meltdown and Spectre. And there isn't a patch also for this which is my uh, Samsung uh, Galaxy Note 12.1 Android tablet. So then this also probably will never get patched. Samsung tend to abandon people on their hardware in terms of update after about three years anyway. So the chances are I've got these two tablets which I use all the time, very important devices to me. These probably will never get patched, will never be secure in terms of Meltdown and Spectre. And this I think is a situation we're all gonna have to get used to. The chances are if you own and use computers which are more than three or four years old, there is a very strong possibility they're never going to get a hardware patch for Meltdown and Spectre. I've now described three different methods which, if they're all used, should provide a reasonable level of mitigation against Spectre and Meltdown. In other words, if you patch your web browser, you patch your operating system, and you patch your firmware on your motherboard if you can, you should get a reasonable level of defense against Meltdown and Spectre. However, if you do all these things, you will also slow down your computer. There will be a performance hit. And Intel, for example, has put out some data on this. And what Intel report is that those systems which are able to be fully patched against Meltdown and Spectre will run between 2 and 11% slower. And this is also to be expected because all of these updates, all of these mitigations, either require browsers or operating systems to do more work or less optimal work, or they require hardware to cease to execute speed enhancement operations. It's therefore pretty certain that 2018 will go down in history as the first year ever in which on average computers were slower at the end of the year than they were at the start of the year. This is going to be a momentous point in computing history. Even if there are no breaches of security linked to Meltdown and Spectre, there's going to be an enormous impact on the computing industry and on us as, as computer users because we're all going to end up with slower computers with performance hits because of Meltdown and Spectre. Beyond the installation of software patches, we can all protect ourselves by changing our behavior. After all, the spectrum meltdown flaws in our processors are only an issue if someone exploits those vulnerabilities. 
and we can all take measures to stop that occurring. So for example, we can use basic good security practice, we can make sure we don't open email attachments we don't recognize or don't trust, we don't click on untrusted links in emails, uh, we make sure we update our antivirus software, and we make sure we only visit trusted websites. Another thing we can do is to make sure we use two-factor authentication on sites where it's available, so you don't just have to enter there your username and password, you have to have a trusted token. So if you're not using two-factor authentication, put that into place. If you want to know more about it, you can watch my video on two-factor authentication. Final thing to remember is that Spectrum Meltdown are not vulnerabilities which will install malicious software on a computer. They can't change data, they simply expose data to another program. And so we can protect against that by making sure there isn't data on our computer which can be exposed to a program we don't want to see it. How do you do that? Well, it's very simple. If you don't want to have data in your computer's memory that somebody else can see, you can turn your computer off. And you can say, well, that's a bit, a bit drastic, but say you want to do online banking. If you want to do some online banking on a computer which may be insecure, which maybe you can't patch, the best thing to do is to have your computer turned off, then turn it on, go into your browser, do your online banking, close it down, turn it off again. And that way, when you then turn it on to, to browse to another website, that website can't get access to anything left in the memory at following your online banking, like your username and passwords and details and things, because they won't be in the memory anymore. So keeping activities isolated by turning a machine on and off before you do things where you enter sensitive data is critical. You know, for many activities, it doesn't matter that your computer has got the, uh, the vulnerabilities of, of, of Meltdown Spectre. If all you're doing is browsing around, watching you know, videos on YouTube, looking at web pages, this sort of thing, if you're not entering sensitive data in that particular session on the computer since you turned it on before you turn it off again, it can't be stolen. So we just need to be sensible. We need to think about devices. You know, I've got here this, um, this tablet, which I now know is going to be a non-trusted device. I'm not going to get a patch for this. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not. But I'll keep using this tablet for general browsing, but I'll be very, very careful in situations where I have to enter sensitive data into it. I don't normally turn this thing off. I just keep it on like most tablets. You close it, you open it, use it when you need to. But now, if I ever need to put a username and password into this system, particularly when it doesn't use two-factor authentication, I will turn it off first, turn it on, put those details in, turn it off again, and then, then, then go back to it, and that makes it much safer. So behavioral change is a critical thing we can all do in order to protect ourselves against Meltdown and Spectre. Since the dawn of computing, there has always been some level of trade-off between security on the one hand and ease of use and performance on the other hand. And what we're really learning now with the Meltdown and Spectre issue is that in microprocessor design for a couple of decades now, there's been too much focus on the performance side and too little on the security side. And this is something because we've seen repeating over and over. We have the same issue with internet technology that's been developed. The web has had to increasingly be made more secure. It's certainly been an issue with Microsoft Windows that, you know, clearly performance and making it look nice was more important than security for many years. Still is, to, to some extent. There's always been this tension in the computing industry. And I don't think we should blame computing companies too much for this because Ourselves as users, we all want to have faster and cheaper machines all the time, so we encourage this race to the bottom to sort of throw away the security issue. And therefore, I'm not sure how bad this is going to be for the computing industry. You know, right now, clearly Intel and AMD want this all to go away, and they want us all to basically install software patches on new computers and quietly forget all the older computers most of us are still actually using and um, it'll all just sort of disappear. And I've been amazed you know, how little attention has been on this issue in the popular press. You know, most computers in the world have got an inbuilt security flaw at the basic hardware level. Why has that not been in the news continuously? Um, but for some reason it hasn't. There's probably clearly very clever control of the press going on somewhere. Anyway, I think this will come back again. And it'll come back in about nine months to a year in a big way, because at that scale of time, we will start to see new processors being available from Intel and AMD, which don't have the Spectrum Meltdown vulnerabilities. And I'm sure at that point we'll see the marketing building up and up and up going, oh guys, you know all those PCs you're running when you've installed mitigation measures or you haven't, well, they're all insecure really. Why don't you buy a new PC with a secure processor? It might be a bit slower than the ones you've had before, but it's secure. So in other words, I think this could be a point that causes mass replacement of equipment in the computing marketplace. We know that desktop PC manufacturers in particular have struggled in recent years to get people to upgrade the PCs. 
There's loads of people, including myself, who are happily running five-year-old, eight-year-old, ten-year-old hardware, because it's perfectly good, does exactly what we need it to, and we haven't had to upgrade it. And now this will be an issue at 40s upgrades. And that could cause a lot of disruption in the sector. It could cause a lot of money to go to computing companies. It could get a lot of people like ourselves very mad because we've got to buy new computers and we had no particular reason to. It'll be, enable Microsoft to really push Windows 10 because none of the new secure processors that come out will support Windows 7. We know that because even current Microsoft processors, the latest ones that they've, they've launched, the latest Intel processors, they don't support Windows 7. They will run it, but you can't get updates because Microsoft has turned them off for new processors. So this will force operating system changes as well as hardware changes. So Meltdown and Spectre, regardless of whether or not they get exploited, are big issues in computing. And we really are in uncharted territory here. This is the biggest bug we've ever really seen. You know, most hardware in the world has got a problem. Uh, and in time, when solutions are available, and they basically are now, that will affect a lot of practice, a lot of behavior, a lot of buying in the computing sector. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. You might be thinking, why have I not given you more detail on what you actually should do to protect, other than basically saying, turn on automatic updates in your, in your browser, in your operating system. And I haven't given you more detail because to put into place the hardware patches, if they're available, that's quite a specific thing to do. It is machine specific. If you're not comfortable doing those sort of upgrades, I wouldn't do it. And I think we could, all of us should wait a bit. I've not patched anything yet. I'm waiting to see what happens with these patches, what issues actually get thrown up. I'm relying much more on having patched at the moment browser and operating system and taking sensible steps that I describe in terms of our computing practice, our behavior. Anyway, that's it for now. If you enjoyed the video, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.